So when people begin to say, what is my intention? And make it clear on their intention. And they write it down. Now the research shows that less than 2% of the Americans actually write their intentions or goals down. The ones that do actually write them down, they have an 80% chance of reaching those goals if they write them down. So when you write something down, you're telling your brain that you mean it. It's a direction that you're moving and it has to be ongoing. And it's a to be statement. A to be statement is something that you're evolving into. Once you get clear on your intention, you're sponsoring thoughts, the list of reasons why you want to be healthy because those sponsoring thoughts are the, really going to be the driving force to get you going in that direction. If it's healthy, you may want to, you want, may have vitality. You may want to look better. Uh, if it's wealth, you want freedom. That's what you really want. You want your freedom to do whatever you want, right? So when you begin to define your intention and you couple it with a sponsoring thought, now you're giving your body a taste emotionally of what that future is going to be like. Now, the next step is to plan your actions. Master your day, one day at a time. So now you've already dismantled an old part of yourself and you say, today the thought I'm going to have is that I'm a genius and I accomplish everything. Or I live in no time and the universe provides for me. The universe lives in my favor. What behaviors am I demonstrating? I'm going to get up and I'm going to work out. Well, I'm going to read that you know, article on success or I'm going to, whatever it is, I'm going to make a choice. And then I'm going, to, I'm going to elevate my emotional state. I'm going to keep my energy up the entire day today. Just that simple process, you've already changed on the biological level. Now, if you get up and you prime review and remind yourself who you're going to be, then the next step is you warmed up your brain and body to be in that personality. Get your behavior to match your intentions. Now take it out for a test drive and accomplish what you set out to do during the day. In other words, when you get your behaviors to match your intentions and your actions equal to your thoughts, you get your mind and body working together. Now you are mastering exactly what you set out to do. And now when you begin to experience the effects of your choices, those new experiences then begin to reaffirm the emotion that you created from your sponsoring thoughts. Now the loop is starting to change and your choices begin to become a new habit. Track your changes. Take a moment and journal or have a little board on your wall and say, I got up earlier, I did a 20 minute walk, I did deep breathing exercises before I went to bed, I feel great, I'm gonna do it again. And my definition of a genius is being uncomfortable and being okay with it. And when I can stay in that place of uncertainty and unknown, and I can transmute that energy into clarity or gratitude, that I can get my energy up even though there's chaos around me, then I'm filling that void between the old self and the new self with information. And when you change your energy, you change your life. In other words, you're so busy being elevated and know you can't predict what's going to happen. You're just very clear you're not going to go back to those familiar cravings and familiar urges. And finally, cue your environment. Take a moment and on your dashboard of your car or on the desk at work or on the mirror in your bathroom or on the refrigerator. Remind yourself what your future is. Simple little cues, simple words or pictures. And if you keep your conscious mind on what you want, your subconscious mind will take you there. The hardest part about change is not making the same choice as you did the day before. So, you can say to yourself, okay, I have some pretty tough thoughts I have to overcome today. Let's just put them out and drag them out for observation right now so I know that when they come up, I'm aware of them and they're not me, that's the old self. And if you begin to look at your choices and the behaviors and you say, you know what, I've been a victim for too long. I'm not going to complain to anyone or anything about anything today. I'm not going to make excuses for myself. Those are the two things I'm not going to do. Just not going to go there. If you were to take a minute and really begin to ask yourself, uh, what part of my old self can I not bring to my new future? Because if I want to be a healthy or wealthy person or a genius, 
I can't bring these thoughts. I can't, that's an, that's an alignment with my future. So when you begin to realize that this is the person I'm going to create, these are the things that I have to leave behind. That simple analogy will begin to you, help you get clear on the direction that you're moving and allow that energy to push you. Now that energy is like the flame on the alchemist's crucible. It's going to turn base metals into gold. It's going to remove the dross. And so purification comes with quite a bit of agitation. There's got to be a stirring that takes place. And I think that most of us in the last year or two have felt this incredible stirring inside of ourselves. And that's because the energy is so intense that our nervous systems have to really adapt to it. So I think our purpose in life is really to remove these layers, these masks, these habits and emotions that block the flow of the divine within us.